can't wait to see what might be in yeah. round two. We can only hope it's something that does bring in or crystallizes the connection between the decisions made at Twitter and the impetus or the starting point of the United States government. And the government. That is the key connecting point. And if there's something there, you got to believe Elon Musk would be willing to give it up at this point. Let's bring in Miranda Devine, New York Post columnist and Fox News contributor, author of the laptop from hell. If it's 9 a.m. on a Saturday and this story is breaking, the one guest you want to talk about it is Miranda Devine. So, Miranda, when you saw that Twitter thread last night talking about what had happened at the company pertaining to the New York Post, your reaction? Look, it's fantastic that Elon Musk has chosen to move the dial a little bit um, further to the truth for the American public to understand. Um, exactly the egregiousness of what went on back in October 2020 when the nation's oldest newspaper, fourth largest by circulation, was censored by big tech in service to one of the two candidates for president. Uh, they interfered in the election. So it's fantastic that Elon Musk has, has sort of opened the Twitter files. Unfortunately, he left out a crucial element, and that was the involvement of the FBI. And we know that the FBI went to Twitter and to Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg's told us that, um, in the weeks and days before our story came out to warn them of um, a specific, what Mark Zuckerberg called a dump, and what FBI uh, agent Elvis Chan, who was just deposed in a Republican lawsuit alas, or this week on Tuesday, um, Elvis Chan called it a hack and leak operation. And that is what he told Twitter executives, that they were expecting a hack and leak operation probably in October. And uh, Yoel mm. Roth, who was uh, at that point, he's now resigned, but he was Twitter's top moderator, basically the head of site integrity. He was at one of these weekly FBI meetings that were going on with the social media giants and FBI every week before the 2020 election. And Yoel Roth has since um, said in a sworn declaration that in one of those meetings, the FBI warned of this impending hack and leak operation, uh, possibly in October, and said that there were rumours, this is what the FBI told him, that it would involve Hunter Biden. And the reason why that's so important is because the FBI at that point was spying on Rudy Giuliani from about a month after he became then President Donald Trump's private attorney. They were spying on his cloud so they had access to all his emails and all his iMessages. And included in those emails in August of 2020 was the initial email from John Paul Mac Isaac, the computer repair shop guy who had in his possession Hunter Biden's laptop that he had abandoned there uh, eight months earlier. And he told Rudy Giuliani exactly what he had found on it, particularly to do with Burisma. He was worried about national security. He included screenshots. The FBI would have had access to wow. all of that back in August of 2020. Right. And they also would have had access to my text messages with Rudy Giuliani about exactly when the New York Post was going to publish. Miranda, this is so wow. disturbing. It's so big. And it's interesting, the FBI should be protecting us from Joe Biden and his son and the national security threat they are, they are to our country. And yet they were involved in suppressing it and altering an election in the process. Um, but more importantly, putting our country in danger. I mean, the reverse of what they're supposed to do, because now Joe Biden is the president and he is probably compromised because of these dirty deals that he did with the Chinese and with Ukraine and with, and with the Russians. Yes, I mean, we don't know if he is compromised, but certainly it's logical to ask that question because his family took in millions of dollars from our greatest adversary, China, not to mention, mention Russia and Ukraine and Romania and Kazakhstan and various other countries, but China's the one that matters. And uh, I, I, I really think that um, since the president has obviously not been um, completely truthful about his knowledge and involvement in his son Hunter and his brother Jim's uh, overseas business dealings when he was vice president, 
um, those questions are even more urgent to be answered. Right. And that's why I think Elon Musk has done the country a, a real service here. And let's hope that in his, his part two, that he actually does reveal more details about the FBI and also about Jim Baker. There was one tantalising email that was released last night from Jim Baker, who was uh, at that point Twitter's uh, gen you know, deputy general counsel, top lawyer in effect. He had come to Twitter from the FBI, where he had been the FBI's general counsel. Mm. So uh, I think the FBI was trying to pre-censor a story because, as we know from James Comey on, they were doing their best to damage and destroy the Trump administration. Really quickly, and, and I'm, I'm glad that you highlight, Miranda, what we all know to be true. This story is about potential corruption. There's an effort today on the left to try to make this a story about decency, meaning it was about nude pics of Hunter Biden. This was never about that, and it wasn't about hacked materials. It was about corruption. Um, on that note, and I want to save a minute here to get to one other thing you're reporting today. You, you focused several times on the FBI in this conversation. What am I to make, though, of the, the entire intelligent apparatus? Because it was not just the FBI afterwards that called this Russian disinformation. It was CIA. It was the entire American intelligence apparatus that waved their hand, dismissed this story. Yeah, you make an incredibly good point. That's right. There was that bogus letter uh, four days after our story, uh, written by the 51 former intelligence officials, including four or five uh, CIA directors, former CIA directors or acting CIA directors, people like uh, James Clapper and John Brennan, uh, Leon Panetta, uh, people who used the authority of their former high officers to traduce the New York Post reporting and to pretend that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation when they knew it wasn't. Uh, and Joe Biden used that letter in uh, his um, debate a couple of days later against Donald Trump, the final debate of the election season, and it basically the letter got him off the hook. Mm. So yes, I think mm. it was a deep state uh, collusion, coordination to ensure that Donald Trump didn't uh, win the election. Absolutely. Will alluded to it, uh, Miranda, real quick. Uh, the New York Post has a headline this morning, Hunter Biden's former law firm, again, Hunter Biden, received $10 million in forgiven COVID loans while donating $1 million to Democrats. What's the story here? This is an investigation by uh, an independent transparency organization called Open the Books, and they looked at 300 of the top law firms in the country, saw what uh, PPP loans they got during the pandemic when that, they were supposed to be for mom and pop businesses to help them uh, get through the pandemic. Uh, it certainly wasn't something on a top law firm like Boy Schiller, where Hunter Biden had worked, had been paid $216,000 a year for this no-show job where he didn't have to attend meetings or turn up with regular office hours. Uh, this company, Boy Schiller, their Democratic donors, um, they, they got $10 million plus in pandemic loans, and that was all forgiven under the Biden administration in 2021. At the same time, they donated around about a million dollars to Democratic federal candidates. It's amazing. Yeah. It's how Washington works. Well, yeah. thank you, Miranda. It's great reporting this morning. Great uh, stuff. We appreciate you sharing it with some Fox and Friends. Yeah. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.